It's going to be a good morning. And I want to go ahead, and the coach is probably going to say a few things about this, but tomorrow, okay, <laughs> tomorrow we have a special guest that will be joining us tomorrow that Coach Myra has brought to the table. And I promise you this, uh, you, you want to bring somebody with you here tomorrow. It's going to be a great, great time uh, tomorrow to end out the week. And it's been a good week for me yeah. so far. Will you guys ever, every morning, 9 a.m., uh, it's just been a blessing. Today's word, and I love it. I'll be honest, when Myra first gave me this word, I wasn't a big fan until I dove into it. And it's probably been one of my better words for the week, personally, okay? Personally, if digging into it, and the words cultivate. And I got to preface this because the first word this old country boy thinks of is farming. Um, <laughs> I lost my first job one time and, and I ended up going into farming with my uncle for, for about a year. I drove John Deere tractors and I cultivated the fields, getting ready for cotton crops. And, uh, you know, so when I first saw this word, I'm like, oh, we're going to talk about farming today. We're going to talk about, you know, and if you really look at it, you know, you can look at a lot of definitions of cultivate where it turns into like land and gardening. But then you also can look at cultivating the mind, like, like acquiring and developing a skill set. And so today I'm going to kind of bring it together and, read, and, and kind of read you my thoughts because I was thinking about it like for myself. To cultivate is to nurture and help grow. Farmers cultivate crops. Fundraising professionals cultivate donors. Celebrities cultivate their images. My profession, network marketing, cultivates relationships. If you really flourish in what I do, when you cultivate something, you work to make it better. And as I was thinking about that, like, I was th again, thinking about myself, I thought about really, really what made me have success as a coach in life. Like I'm talking about a coach when I coached kids, high school kids. We've talked about this before, but it was cultivating the relationships. It was not the strength of my X's and O's. It was not the strength of the knowledge of my workout. I surrounded myself with people that were a lot better than me at that. But what I excelled at was cultivating relationships with the kids. They knew I had their back. They knew I would take their problems and think about it. They knew I cared about them. And I believe that was one of the things that helped propel me in coaching at, at the football, uh, high school kids. And I think about that and I go, okay, I got to drop it down just a little bit. I want you to think about it from your perspective. But I wrote this down today and I said, my past mistakes, Brent Palmer's past mistakes, my story, okay? We've all got stories, right? We've all got our own story. My heartaches in life, my circumstances that I, a lot of times I put myself through, right? And the tension I feel right now in my season, we're all in a season, right? Mm -hmm. I'm in a season right now, and, and there's days, there's a lot of tension in my season. But every bit of it is part of my growing ground. Think about that now. When we take cultivate back to farming, it's, it's about breaking the soil up for greatness, breaking the soil up for growth, Right. And I thought about that, and I thought my past mistakes, my stories, my heartaches, my circumstances, and my tension that I'm even experiencing right now, every bit of it is part of the growing ground. It's part of the cultivation that's going to create my future growth, my future greatness. And that's what it meant to me today. Marcus Cicerio, as I close, said, said this really good. He said, cultivation to the mind is, a, uh, is necessary as food to the body. I messed that up. 
Cultivation to the mind is as necessary as food is to the body. So that was my thought for today, guys. I hope it added value. Coach, I'm going to turn it to you. Okay, uh, Brent, that was fantastic. I mean, you, it, it really, really was. Uh, and I'm going to kind of start mine like Brent did uh, in that I don't know why cultivate landed on my heart last night when I sent him a text late about what about this word but you know I immediately it took me back to Spring Valley Alabama which is in Colbert County and it reminded me of my grandfather Grand Grand Gargus because of his he cultivated you know the grounds and the crops and he had such wonderful crops every single year so that like Brent that it, it took me back to that but then I started looking at all the different ways that the word cultivate is used in uh, a general, I'm going to use a general term and it means to improve or train someone or something. Let me say that again, to improve or train someone or something. And today what I'm going to do is just give some suggestions on how to cultivate or how to improve our minds to get into a growth mindset. Every single one of us are looking on ways to grow, whether it's personally on our business, uh, as friends, as family, whatever, we're looking to grow. So I, I, there's a bunch of things out there, but I'm just going to talk about five this morning. Uh, acknowledge and embrace our imperfections. If we hide from our individual weaknesses, we're never going to overcome them. You know, we have to own it. We have to embrace what our imperfections are, or we're never, ever going to overcome them. And when we're dealing with that, we have to look at, we view challenges in our life. And Coach was talking about a little bit of that while ago in his. We have to view challenges as opportunities, not something that we're going to run from. You know, when we cultivate a growth mindset, we're relishing opportunities for self-improvement. You know, in the first two points of the five I'm making, these two may be the most powerful because if we own our imperfections and we look at challenges as opportunities, we have no other way to go but up may take a while but another thing and you, you guys that have been in coaching or in, in our in our business now is replace the word failing with the word learning replace the word failing with the word learning when we fall short of a goal we haven't failed we've simply learned something it's hard to say that and accept it sometimes isn't it if we fail, we really haven't failed, we've learned. You know, another area that, that I'm guilty of, sometimes I think I overemphasize speed when I get involved in something. But we have to emphasize growth over speed. Growth over speed. Learning fast is not the same as learning or training well. Training well will always require time for mistakes. So we have to understand it's not about speed when we're trying to cultivate and have a, a, a positive growth mindset. And my fifth point is we have to take ownership of our attitude. Once we develop a growth mindset, we must own it. Acknowledge yourself is someone that possesses a growth mentality and be proud to let it guide you. Be very proud to let it guide you. We have to work to cultivate ourselves more and more every day. And I know myself, for me to grow in my mindset, I've got to do a lot of cultivating to overcome what my weaknesses are. 
Again, I say this a lot. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. That applies to every aspect in our life. So that's all I got for you today. But I do want to challenge you to bring somebody on the call tomorrow because I'm telling you right now, the person I've got going to join us, <laughs> he is the bomb. Blessed, blessed, blessed to have this guy on tomorrow. I can promise you. Some of you are going to go, oh my God, because of the arena that he's in. So anyway, you need to show up. Because I can promise you, gonna be some showing out on this call tomorrow. Okay, bring somebody to the table. I promise you, every person that Coach and I bring to you, they're great people. They are solid in every way. They are ultra successful in what they do. So, bring one person tomorrow with you. Is this gonna be worth it? I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, think about it like this. We always say find somebody today and make them have a better day because mm -hmm. you showed up. Let that person be the person you bring back here tomorrow because it's going to bless them. I know I'm excited about it. When she told me this, I'm like, oh yes, it's going to be good. It is going to be good. So thanks coach for that message. Um, it's all the mind. The mind is a mighty thing when you feed it right. So, Great message this morning. So we got we we got we're giving a book away again today. So yeah. the Dream Giver, the Dream Giver. It's a powerful book if you have not read it. But we're going to give somebody that book. So let's hashtag Dream as we close out this Thursday of the Coach's Corner. Hashtag Dream. Who's going to be the winner today? Five. Should we even four, let April play? <laughs> three, <laughs> two, one. <laughs> Okay, who is the winner today? Stop. <laughs> all right, all right, are you ready? We have a new person, it was in April today <laughs> for the first time. <laughs> so we have Amber Music Clark Musick. I don't know how to say it, but Amber. Congratulations. Congratulations, Amber. Amber, can you unmute your line? Yes, thank you guys. It's music, like what you sing. Amber, music, where are you from, Amber? Uh, originally from North Carolina, but I live in Michigan now. Okay. All right. Yes. Well, first of all, thanks for jumping on the co Coach's Corner. Um, and we will be, if you will, in the chat, if you'll just put your address um, or, or you can send it to. I, can I PM you or something? You can text it to Andrea Rosser. She just put her number in the address. Perfect. Feel free to just text her that and we will get, you're going to be blessed.